Uh, hi, I'm Ting Yang. Hi, I'm Richard, and we both work on Professor Kate Tilling's programme, and here she is to explain a little bit more about it. I guess the, the overarching aim of the IEU and a lot of epidemiology is to draw conclusions about causes. So does high blood pressure cause you to be more likely to have a heart attack? And what I may need to do with my programme is minimise the biases when you're doing that sort of analysis. So make the best evidence for drawing causal conclusions. I suppose I work halfway between applied and methodological. So I tend to work with people who have a question they want to answer with some data and then try and look at what are the problems that there are with getting the answers and then try and work out with some mathematicians or some statisticians what their answers there might be for their problem. So it's very much taking the question, looking at the maths, looking at the statistics, looking at the methods there are for answering the question and then feeding that back into the original question. There are five uh, aims of Kate's programme, the first of which uh, concerns differences in between people and how effective treatments might be, because often medical research tries to estimate like an average treatment effect, but there might be differences between groups of people in how they respond to treatments, and that could be very important to know um, when you're administering treatments or understanding how they might work. And there's the second aim to Kate's programme, which is looking at measurement error and how to quantify it and how to adjust for it in the analysis. So measurement error becomes a problem uh, in cases, for example, if we're looking at the association between alcohol intake and cardiovascular diseases. And if uh, you know, a group of people decide to uh, underreport their alcohol intake for whatever reason, that would seem like the relationship between alcohol and uh, cardiovascular disease is um, very little. So there's no effect whatsoever. Um, so potentially you're not uh, finding the, the true um, causal question. One of the main problems I'm looking at at the moment is that the, the people who join in to a research project tend to be different in lots of little ways that we can't always predict from the kind of people who, who don't volunteer to be in a research project. And then once people have joined the study, different things might make them drop out over time. And that, they may be related to their health. So for example, if you, if you become of poorer health, you might not want to carry on being in a research project or other things that happen in people's lives. So what you end up with is trying to draw conclusions from a group of people who don't represent the whole population. So that leads to uh, something called selection bias. So what we're looking at is developing ways to, well, first of all, tell that that's happening, and then secondly, to try and minimise its effect so that we can draw true causal conclusions. One of the other aims of Kate's programme is to um, look at sort of realistically complex uh, relationships so quite often in medical research you might look at the relationship between a single exposure uh, or intervention um, and an outcome whereas there might be multiple different exposures affecting an outcome the level of the exposure might change across time there might be different periods of the life of life where people are more or less sensitive to it and so on and you've been looking at this kind of um, these sorts of questions with regard to climate change, haven't you, Chen Yang? Yes, I have. Yeah, so I've been looking at um, relationship between heat waves and um, what cause mortality. Um, so yeah, during a heat wave, people are for whatever reason are more likely to die from heat wave. But then we are then taking, uh, looking at what actually happened during the heat wave. Then, but we also looked at what happens if we didn't have um, human-induced a carbon footprint, for example, then what would our mortality look like after, if we think about this, I guess, uh, counterfactual world where car uh, carbon emissions are not a problem. So I've also been a researcher triangulation. Uh, so triangulation is this idea of if you have a research question you want to answer, you have some findings, and you want to confirm your findings by looking at uh, combined different studies or looking at different methods to then confirm whether the conclusion that you've drawn is correct. Um, so in Kate's programme, we're particularly interested at looking at randomization and randomised control trials and how those two potential uh, study designs, where whether we can uh, combine those two to get a very confident answer that, that the, the association you've found or the causal question you've found is correct. An example of triangulation could be looking at, uh, so I've been looking at beta-carotene and uh, cardiovascular diseases. 
and I am finding, um, so each study has slightly different estimates. So for randomized controlled trials, it's saying that actually beta-carry has adverse effect on your cardiovascular health. But whereas in your um, observational studies, you have uh, a protective effect. So saying that beta-carry is actually good for your cardiovascular health. So the idea is, is that some studies, they might be biased for whatever reason. Um, and also the, so then we have to assess the bias for each of the studies. And then when we put those different studies together, whether after adjusting for bias, whether we still get the same answer. But not necessarily have to be biased. It could also mean that each study are looking at different population. So you have population that might be looking at um, only females or only males. Maybe that might give you a slightly different answer. Or you might look at areas where people, um, I don't know, have a Mediterranean diet and maybe very high, very nutritious. Or you could have another country who um, might have slightly different lifestyle choices for whatever reason. So it's not necessarily wrong, just looking at different population. So we're looking, using this uh, triangulation method to try to understand why are the differences between the studies and the effects.